hello everyone welcome to illustrasa in this lecture i am going to show you how easily you can define static seismic load in midas zen software here i am using the trial version of midas 2024 you can also visit their website and download it for a certain period you can use the trial version to learn how it is working actually so uh, let us begin with the static seismic definition in midas zen so first of all what i will do i will create two load cases for the seismic uh, conditions so let us go to load here and here you can see we are in the static load uh, tab actually so we just select static load as we are uh, defining the static seismic loads here under the lateral tab i mean the under the lateral you can see uh, in the ribbon you will find this seismic load so i'll just uh, uh, before go getting into the seismic loads what i will do i will create the static load cases for the seismic load okay so i'll just go to uh, static load cases here you can see what i have done i have already assigned dead load uh, floor live loads and the roof live load here actually okay so now i will create uh, a case called suppose seismic along x direction i will change the load type as uh, you can see uh, earthquake so i will select this and i'll click on add and for the y direction i will just change the name to eqy and i will click on add so now what i have done i have uh, created the seismic uh, cases under this seismic cases we will be basically assigning the seismic loads uh, the static seismic loads so uh, we all know that uh, whenever we want to create the seismic load this is nothing but inertial force right so it is a pseudo force that we will be uh, estimating and uh, it comes uh, it is basically uh, comes due to the movement of the mass that we have every story level, right so what we have to do we have to create that mass source or create that seismic weight uh, which will be basically giving us the seismic force for every story so for that uh, first of all we need to convert the you can say sulfate of the structure to a mass and then we will be converting the other loads that we have assigned so you can see in the uh, loads we have assigned the self weight uh, with a, a minus one factor along the z direction which is the vertical direction okay then we have applied some let me just show you we have applied some uh, line loads or you can say uh, uh, uniformly distributed loads on the beams we have applied some uh, you can say floor loads on the on the you can say structure okay and uh, the flow loads i mean it is under the dead load then also live load also we have assigned flow loads uh, live load on the floors below the roof and the live load which is on the roof right so now you can see we have created two load cases eqx and eqy and under this we will be defining the seismic uh, uh, condition or static seismic load so for that first of all we will uh, go to structure and structure type here you can see we have a option to convert the self weight into masses so if you are defining the uh, seismic load in all three directions you can go to this convert to x y and z uh, as we are uh, will be i mean uh, defining the seismic load only in two directions two lateral directions so i will click on here convert to x and y gravity acceleration obviously 9.806 meter per second square okay now the thing we need to change uh, uh, you may uh, consider this uh, lumped mass no other thing is required as of now and the structure type will be 3d because we have a three-dimensional structure model in the Midas Zen correct so this is the basic thing we just have to click this uh, converts sulfate into masses and uh, convert for two uh, directions which is x and y okay and click on ok so one thing we have done then what we have to do we have to uh, go to load and here you will find this option under this structure and structure loads and masses if you just go to this drop down you'll find this option called loads to masses okay so you just click on this loads to masses now uh, what are the loads you want to convert into seismic mass so basically whatever load we have applied okay pressure we do not have any hydrostatic uh, pressure basically so even if you select or doesn't select it it doesn't matter actually if you select or don't, don't select so uh, what you can do you can uncheck or keep it as it is now the mass shall move uh, along x and y so what i will do i will select this x and y okay uh, the gravity acceleration obviously 9.81 or you can say 9.806 meter per second first of all i will select the dead load and as per is 1893 2016 we all know that we need to consider 100 percent of the dead load for 
seismic condition right so uh, scale factor i will keep it as one and i click on add then what i have to do i will go to live load floor we all know that if you do not have any equipment permanent equipment on the uh, on the roof okay so in that case the roof live load you can ignore basically in the seismic mass so we are not that's why we have created two live load cases lf and lr okay live load for floors and live load for the roof so we will only include the live load for floors which we have included uh, for the seismic uh, analysis so uh, live load floor we have uh, flow load less than 3 kiloton per meter square so in this case you can consider 25 percent so 0.25 will be my scale factor and click on add so what we have done we have added the uh, loads which we want to use for the seismic mass definition correct so you just have to click on ok and you can see the seismic mass is very, uh, specifically defined here okay you will find this in this in this uh, tree menu also uh, what are the works you have done so you can see the loads to masses so dead load and uh, you can say live load and remember the sulfide that we have uh, converted to you can say uh, the seismic mass so basically the sulfide is also under the dead load case only right so once we are done with this now we can proceed with the seismic load definition so from this lateral tab you can click on the seismic loads under the load uh, menu click on add and select the load case first so you can see we have two load cases eqx and y so first i will select eqx uh, we'll be using is 1893 2016 you can see the older code also available if you want to use so let us select this is 1893 2016 uh seismic zone let us consider zone 5 so i'll type maybe medium soil i'm just giving you an example uh, importance factor suppose i have a building of less than 200 occupancy so maybe importance factor one uh, we can consider for a residential building damping ratio we'll know we all know for concrete we will be considering five percent now this time period okay the static time period you can always calculate as per the codal provision but uh, the software also gives you uh, these these formulas to calculate basically so what we have done based on the height of the structure based on the dimension of the structure and which formula you want to use for you can say the seismic load calculation you will be using i mean you can choose from here and it will be calculating the force so this is a structure with shear wall and column basically so if you want to consider it as a structural wall system you may go with i mean we need to calculate the time period manually for all three conditions and whatever i mean the conditions are given in is 1893 that which one you have to select right as of now for example we will be using the most commonly used uh, formula which is uh, 0 0.09 h power by root d okay uh, uh, so we'll be using this fifth option and you can see uh, the d is automatically taken from the dimension of the structure that we have modeled okay and if i click on okay and you can see the time period is uh, basically calculated response reduction factor we will consider as five as special moment resisting frame and special shear wall and now see this is my uh, seismic force along x direction right so we will be using the factor scale factor for x direction as one and for y direction as zero correct as of now i do not just want to show you uh, i mean how to define the seismic force so i am not going to consider this accidental eccentricity you can make it none okay if you want to add the accidental eccentricity you can you have to create three conditions okay one without eccentricity uh, one with negative eccentricity and positive eccentricity correct uh, so i just want to leave it as it is so once you are done with this particular definition you can visualize what you have done actually so if you just click on this seismic load profile you can see how beautifully this uh, midas zone is showing you the story forces so you can see the calculated story force okay uh, at, 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 this is the seismic weight of the particular floor and uh, and you can see the story force which is being distributed throughout the uh, height right you can see the story here you can also see the overturning moment right so this is for x direction because we are uh, defini defining the x direction load you can also create the uh, you can say uh, load calculation sheet which you can add in your uh, you can say design calculation maybe uh, design uh, dba that will be making design basis report if you click on this make seismic load calculation sheet you can see it will create this uh, 
very nice uh, calculation for you so uh, you can see here uh, all the calculations are equivalent static method is using and it is given what are the values you have taken how the story forces are coming see uh, this is for y directional load so there is no value is coming okay for the seismic load def definition uh, along x direction it is coming like this you can copy from here and you can put it simply in your uh, i can say model right i mean in your dbr so these things whatever is required you can copy from there or you can directly paste it whatever it is right so this detailed report will very much i mean it will help you because it is very clearly written everything one by one right so you can save it as uh, i mean you can uh, export it from here you can print it so for now i'll just close this so you can so once you are done with this we i'll just uh, close it and i'll what i will do i will click on apply and once i clicked on apply you can see under the seismic eqx the seismic definition that we have done it is uh, i can say uh, applied and you can see the story forces are being visible right now i will change it to eqy uh, as it is a static seismic force the thing will be changing right uh, now i will make it zero the x direction zero and y direction i'll make it as one correct and similar way you can go to seismic load profile and for y direction also you can check what are the values coming correct this thing also you can i mean take screenshot or take print right uh, for your uh, design calculation report so i'll just close this and i'll click on apply again so you can see the static seismic forces are uh, added here now i will close this i will close this also now let us go to uh, you can say analysis and let's perform the analysis so i'll just click on this perform analysis okay so Midas Gen software is performing the analysis. So analysis is complete. You can see the message window. Okay, there is no uh, uh, you can say multi-frontal solution has been controlled. So it will give you a message that your Midas job successfully completed. That means your analysis is complete. Okay. So once you are done with this, now if you want to see the display shape and all, what you can do, you can go to results. Let me turn off this basically and display. I think the flow load is visible here and display. Yeah. So now what I will do, I will go to deformations. I'll click on this displacement contour. Okay. I'll select suppose EQX from here. I'll select DX because we want to see from along the di uh, direction X. And I will select contour. I will also select, I can say, deform shape. And I also want to know the legends. Right. Now if I click on apply. You can see it is showing you the deformed shape if i just change the direction to uh, the front view so you can see it is the displaced shape along x direction okay from isometric view also you can see and this is the displacement contour i mean uh, the, the the range of displacement that is happening basically in the story so if you want to just change this uh, the way it is showing it what you can do we can click on this three dot beside this legend and you can rather than making it exponential you can click on fixed and suppose up to three digits we want to see after decimal right and if you want to take this table in the left side you can change it to left side you can click on ok you can see it is showing you the maximum displacement you can see which node number 313 so i think this node number let me see yeah this is 313 and here you can see the displacement along x direction is 0 0.0188 so it is around 0 0.019 right it is in meter so uh, this is the value it is showing basically okay so you can see the values also you can see those values at every node what is the displacement it's happening correct now if you want to animate this structure for your uh, lateral uh, loading so what you can do you can click on this animate and click on apply now if you just click on here play okay we need to press record button you can see it is uh, visible actually so first i will click on this record button and then it will start showing you the animated shape for your uh, structure okay so deformation it is visible how the uh, force is being act, uh, acting and how the structure is deforming so it is giving you the contour for this you can change it to eqy and you can apply for the that direction also eqy and let me click on this record again 
now along eqy there is some torsion is happening okay i don't know why it is happening maybe uh fine okay uh, because we selected dx sorry let me just change it to dy yeah yes yeah so now you can see it is uh, sorry uh, by mistake i have selected dx so it was showing like this so this is the deflection along y direction for the eq y that means seismic load or seismic force along y direction okay so this is the way you can define static seismic load in midas gen and it is very you can say the graphic interface uh, if you see uh, the gui user interface is very nice uh, even the results uh, the interpretation of results also very easy basically from here okay uh, you can uh, in, in the coming videos i will show you how you can export the results i mean the tabular format uh, how you can get the base shear values everything you can get actually in my result that will be seeing in the coming lectures so i hope this lecture will help you if you are starting uh, with the midas gen or you are, if you are using uh, midas gen so uh, you may follow like you may see these lectures if you have any doubt you can always write me in the comment box uh, thank you and see you in the next lecture